Can I get you to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hi, I'm Abby Bridgman and I'm a singer from Southport and I'm playing at the Isle of Wight Festival. <laughs> Just to clarify, you were a former Miss England contestant as Miss Southport, is that correct? Yes, yes. And uh, now you've moved into the music industry and developed an American accent. No, not really. I've only, um, because I listen to a lot of um, American music as I'm heavily influenced by country music. I'd say my genre is indie country. I think you may develop a bit of a country twang now and then, so <laughs> maybe a little one. Now, you've been spending a huge amount of time outside the UK, haven't you, recently? I have. I've been travelling around, I've done um, over the past two years, actually no, God, it's coming up to about three years now since um, that festival in Nashville. I've just been developing my music, you know, getting outside influences and just really developing my style and who I am as an artist and I think I'm finally getting there. <laughs> now you've played in Nashville, did you say? I did, in 2013 I played the famous CMA festival in Nashville. What was that like? It was surreal, incredible. Um, it was definitely go down as one of the most incredible memories and experiences to be somewhere where everyone shares the same, gets the same taste in music as you, the excitement as I've never been to America before. And I've always been in love with it. It was just, it was just mind blowing. It was, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Adored it. Absolutely adored it. You haven't got a huge social media presence. I know you've actually had a couple of websites in the past, uh, but they've sort of been on, then off, then on and off. I but know. I'm dreadful. This is like my. I I should like I I should be. I wish I was a musician in the '90s when Oasis were coming out and Blur and everyone like that because you didn't have the social media. You could have a great band, great song, get gigging, and if you're lucky, something may happen. You know, you have to try hard when nowadays, I just find, um, with everyone, I'm sure, but it, a lot of it's down to your social media presence, and I'm just, I'm not that type of person. I'm not a Snapchatter. I'm not a selfie person. I'm not a, I don't know. I just think it's, it's breeding a certain culture, and I think that's, I don't know. That's my problem. I need to get myself on social media ASAP, and I'm going to try. I'll start posting about Coca-Cola that I drink. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're in great company with that, with Donald Trump, so maybe not Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I'll try more. <coughs> so, you've got something really amazing coming up in the UK, haven't you? That yes. Do you want to say what it is, then? Well, um, yeah, a week to... Well, actually, I'm travelling there a week tomorrow. Um, I'm playing the Isle of Wight Festival. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. So how did you get chosen for the Isle of Wight Festival? Because that's one of the biggest, well-known music festivals in the UK. Well, since being in London, I've gigged and gigged and gigged and gigged and I've worked myself to the bone. I've worked so hard trying to get myself out there in front of people. And during that period of time, um, I became the music ambassador for the Hard Rock Cafe. And um, I've actually been given the nickname now as the Hard Rock Girl. So, and sometimes, um, like I've done, I did the Pixie Lot campaign, T-shirt campaign, and I did... Um, I do their fashion clothes and I get to wear their t-shirts and I do events and everything. It, it's really fun. But because of, um, one of the reasons of that is we also became, my band became for now and then with a house band at Hard Rock Cafe. And that has us performing for some of their top events, um, playing for some really cool celebrities actually. It is, um, it's a really great experience. And from that, we had the opportunity to have my band put forward to play, it didn't mean I'd get picked because, you know, there's thousands of people that apply to play the Out of White Festival on the Hard Rock stage. Um, unfortunately, I was one of the lucky few that got chosen, so I actually get to open up the stage on the, on the Friday, so no pressure. <laughs> so your nerves are getting to you, then? I 
in. Are your nerves getting to you? No, it's weird now. I, it, it's become, music's become so natural to me now performing. You know, I do it multiple times a week. And my band, my family, you know, they're, they're my boys. They, you know, we, we, no, I'm not nervous. I'm just excited. I'm just, I don't, I'm not going to let nerves ruin it for me. I'm, I'm sure on the day when my hair's going wrong and whatever's happening, the guitar strings are breaking and we have to do all that stuff, then I'll start getting nervous. But right now I'm just enjoying the run-up and the preparation. Being dyslexic, if you don't mind me saying that, I, yeah. how does that affect you with memorising and re um, doing the recording and doing all the stuff that you need to do as a musician? Oh God, I've become the best songwriter because of that, because even when I sing my own songs, I'm making them up as I go along when I forget them. So it's, it's not a problem whatsoever, to be honest. It's, um, it, performing is natural and I, I don't know, when you do it so many times, it's kind of like drilled into you to do it and I don't, it doesn't really affect me too much, to be honest, to be very, yeah. Years ago, I remember sitting in Costa and mm -hmm. you were trying to break in and get out of modelling and go into the music business yeah. and you had a lot of false starts and you were very down at one stage. What do you think was your tipping point? What do you think actually helped you overcome it and get you to where you're going now, which is on your world up? I think, I think down would might be like um, a bad way of explaining it. I think I was just more frustrated. Um, and in my past, I used to be um, an athlete. If you didn't get your times, if you didn't win that day, you couldn't go home and just give up. You'd go and train harder. And I think that philosophy has carried over very well to everything that I've done in life, which just keeps me pushing forward no matter what. And I just go day by day and step by step. I'm not aiming for the, you know, um, I'm not aiming for the to be famous. I just want to do music. I just want my, I want, I want my songs to be heard. I want, that's what I want. And it sounds so cliche, but I always think this. If you shoot for the stars and you don't make it, at least you'll hit the moon. Or it's, it's something like that. That's my version of it. And I, I live by that. I just think you should... I guess, yeah, I guess that my outlook on life is just keep trying. And that's, that's, that's what I've done. You know, you never know something's going to change until the change happens. Now, if anybody wants to hear your music who can't make it to that show, are you coming up north to do anything? I will be. I will be coming up very soon. Um, I'm just right now, I'm organising some dates in Liverpool and Manchester. Um, so I will let you know when that's happening. But also, I'm releasing my EP very soon um, after the festival. So that will be out to listen to very soon. Now I'm going to be very nasty and ask you, have you got any social media accounts anybody should be following? I do. I've got the, um, on my Facebook, it's Abby Bridgman Official. And then my Twitter is Abby.Bridgman. Or it might be the other way around, but it's definitely just ABI Bridgman, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I, I, I'll put a link under the article for you, no worries. Thank you. Last question of all. Go on. Have you rescued anybody from the Thames yet? Jumping into the Thames very fast, to be honest. Some, uh, stories, some stories I've heard. I think we best explain uh, about that bit because uh, there's a very famous story of you rescuing a contestant in one of the model events, didn't, wasn't it? Yes, in Italy. And you used to be a lifeguard in Southport as well, didn't you? I did. I did. I did. It was. It was really. Um, they were happy days. They were, I loved being a lifeguard. It still comes naturally to me. I still love it. You know, if I want to get my um, Baywatch moments out. <laughs> so, watch this space. We'll probably be getting some sea sh shanties from you. Yes. Brilliant. Well, thank you for your time, Abby. That's absolutely thank fantastic. You. Oh, have an awesome day. All the best and good luck.
thank you.